This video is a demonstration of the fact table destination, part of Task Factory Professional Edition. What I've done so far is I created an OLADB source to my source system and an ADO.NET connection to my data warehouse. I also have a query I've written up here that will pull data out of my participation table, which is my, OLED, my source table that I want to load. Uh, now I want to load, load data from this table into my data warehouse and my fact table. And to do that, what you're seeing is I have two alternate keys. An alternate key in data warehousing terms is the primary key in your source system. To next, I'll, I'll drag over a fact table destination. And this fact table destination is going to require the ADO.NET connection that I've already created. Now, the benefit of the fact table destination is it's going to load this data in a bulk process doing all the lookups and all the benefit of, of T-SQL behind the scenes. So it's going to load these records in 10,000 row increments. It can also handle updates. It can handle range lookups. And there's no reason to have lookup transforms anymore or the drive column transforms. It's going to do all that work for us. So let's go inside the fact table destination. My first step is to point it to my ADO.NET connection and point to my table that I want to load. In my case, it's a factless, uh, factless uh, table that we see right here. That, that fact table had two lookup trans or two um, uh, two surrogate keys. So I'm going to hit the add lookup twice here. One for my club table, and then one for my student table. In my student table, I'll start by going ahead and and checking the surrogate key that I want to output from this. And I want to alias this as student, just so it becomes a little simpler to see. Now watch the left here. When I, when I call it student and I click somewhere else, we'll see it actually changes the name there as well. And it changes the name from this point forward. So I have the student SK being outputted. If I try to do a lookup and I can't find that value, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to map this to my data warehouse now. So for the student table, I'm going to map my data warehouse, which has a student AK, to my incoming data here from my OLEDB source. So the student AK from there. Now, if I can't find that value after trying that lookup, I'm going to output a, a default value. It might be the word of unknown. In my case, it's going to be the value of negative one, which is a stub record that I have. For the club, it's going to be exactly identical. I'm going to output this to the club SK. Again, it's going to be a negative one if I can't find it. Now, this time it's a little bit different. This is a type two dimension. So in this case, I'm going to output the club SK again. Oops, sorry, club AK, excuse me. And I'm going to map that to my value that you saw in my OLEDB source. Now, I only want to get the active record. So I'm going to change this end date. If the end date is null, that means it's my active record. That's a very common pattern in type two dimensions. So when the end date is null, it must mean it's the active record. Okay. So we can also fail the records if I can't find a match also. There's a whole bunch of ways we can actually treat that. With that now done, you'll notice in the top right that I actually am going to insert records and update records. Now, in my case, I don't really want to have a update pattern here. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck update. Now, if I did have an update pattern, I can just check the key columns that represented a unique value in my data warehouse. Typically, it's going to be the, all the, the matching of all the surrogate keys. The combination of all your foreign keys in a fact table is typically going to be a, 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 a unique value. So because I'm only doing inserts and adding new values, I don't need to check this key column right here. So I want to now map my data warehouse now to the incoming data and the matches that I've already done. So in my club SK, I'll map that to club lookup I've already done, and then the student lookup I've done here. All right, with that now done, I'll click OK. Looks like we're doing pretty well there. Now, this replaced a pattern that looks like this, typically in SIS. Look up, look up, and a drive column transform, and finally the destination. So let's go ahead and run this and see how we do. OK, it's going to run this now. Takes a few seconds. There it goes. And we're now done. What this is doing behind the scenes is it's running a merge syntax uh, to basically do an upsert pattern in the data if I need updating. But it does a big, big it does a big, big performance gain by doing this. It also handles things like range lookups as well, where I can say, what was the student during this date based on the fact on, on a uh, on a transaction I'm receiving? What the student looked at at that time. All right, so in this video, we showed you how to use a fact table destination to load data from a source system into a fact table much more effective effectively and much more efficiently using Task Factory.